Hello and welcome to another video from Waters and Stanton video channel. My name is Peter Waters, callsign G3OJV. And I'm going to talk about receivers and how possibly you might be able to improve your receiver performance just by the way you set it up. Now, if you're an old timer, then probably you know a lot of this or all of it. But what prompted this video was me discovering an old um, portable hard disk that I had um, in a cupboard and uh, you know curiosity and so forth I plugged it in and I was surprised <laughs> there was a whole collection of photographs that I took at the Muckleborough collection um, which is based in North Norfolk it's an old um, army tank range which has now become a museum and um, I think it was the North Norfolk Amateur Radio Club forgive me if I've got the name wrong North Norfolk Amateur Radio Club uh, that invited me up there to give a talk and I took the opportunity of taking some photographs of their very, very fascinating amateur radio communications um, museum. And it got me thinking when I saw these photographs again because there was things like the CR100 and the AR88D and all the controls and so forth that were on those receivers, some of which you still see today but some of which you don't, like um, uh, AVC automatic volume control and so forth, um, RF gain control which we used to spend ages fiddling about with in the early days to resolve SSB because you had to back off the RF gain otherwise it overloaded the receiver. And it got me thinking, it got me thinking about how possibly some of the newcomers may not know quite how to set up their receiver for the best um, reception and dare I say it, lower noise. First of all though, I'm going to show you um, the photographs that set this all off in my, in my head. So let's have a look at this uh, fascinating collection. Well, there we are, <laughs> quite an interesting range of equipment. Um, there was another control on one of those receivers saying um, aerial trimmer, which is another thing that you don't see these days. Anyway, the modern transceiver or the modern receiver has uh, great performance, but there's ways that you can improve the performance. And if you're a newcomer, maybe some of these things you haven't realized. So I'm gonna cover those points and hopefully um, it will enable you to adjust your receiver for, for better reception. Now, I did do a video very recently um, showing you how you could actually improve the reception simply by projecting the um, sound from the speaker forward. Let's just take a look at one of the clips there. So you see, just by putting your hand behind the speaker, you, you can project the um, audio forwards, and that makes quite a big difference. So I'm not suggesting you keep your hand there all the time, but any objects you can put behind there to reflect the sound forward is going to be beneficial. Now the RF gain control is an interesting control because it's one of the controls on the receiver that many uh, operators just leave set to full clockwise position, or well, this maximum RF gain. But it is put there for a reason. 
And you know, all of us suffer with noise level of various degrees on the radio. Sometimes it's S5, sometimes it's S7, and it will vary from band to band. Now, if you have your RF gain control fully clockwise, in other words, maximum gain, it's rather pointless because you don't need it that far forward. Now, um, if you look on the screen now, I'm going to show you, um, if you rotate the RF gain control backwards, anti-clockwise, you'll see the S meter rise. And what, you're, what you need to do is to set that RF gain to the point at which it matches the noise level on the S meter. In other words, if the S meter is reading S7 noise at uh, full RF gain, turn the RF gain control back until the meter meets the S7 point. In actual fact, what you'll find then is that the, the sort of wiggly bit of the noise will become stable. So in other words, what you've done is you've set the RF gain control back to a position which matches your RF, which matches your noise level. So then you have reduced the noise level that you'll hear in between syllables or transmissions of stations because you don't want is this sort of continual sort of background noise coming up back back forwards turn the rf gain control back and in fact what you can do is you can use the rf gain control more as a volume control it's an interesting concept and uh, you can juggle the af and the rf gain control but the rf gain control fully forward is a bit of a pointless exercise if you've got noise of s5 or s7 turn that rf gain control back and you'll find it much more comfortable listening and the other thing of course is that you should have your um, agc the automatic gain control um, set to slow most uh, transceivers will have two or three positions of the agc fast is typically typically for cw although i personally like my agc slow all the time certainly for ssb reception have the AGC set to slow. Um, as a matter of interest, on the uh, IC9700, there are three levels of uh, AGC, um, slow, medium, and fast. Uh, I find slow can be a bit too slow sometimes, but certainly you don't want it on a fast uh, position. Now let's talk about bandwidth and IF shift. Uh, a number of receivers have got a bandwidth control um, or a switch to adjust the, uh, the bandwidth. You want to reduce your bandwidth as much as possible because if you narrow the bandwidth down, then you reduce the noise. There's a, the signal-to-noise ratio improves as you narrow the bandwidth down. And uh, you'll find that as you narrow the bandwidth down, so the noise will tend to reduce. But you'll get to a point where it starts to affect the quality of the signal. You may find that the signal may go a little bit bassy or a little bit toppy. Now, when you get to that point, just try moving your IF shift around because the IF shift and the bandwidth control really sort of interlock. Uh, so uh, maybe you're far enough away. I'm looking up to Scandinavia. Maybe that would give me a better test. If you find that as you turn, as you narrow the bandwidth down, the, the signal's bassy, uh, then you move the IF shift, and likewise, if it gets treble, you move the IF shift, and you will find those two controls interlock, and you probably find that you get quite a significant improvement in reception by juggling those two controls together. Now let's talk about the preamp switch or button on the receiver and the attenuator switch. The preamp uh, is designed to improve reception of weak signals. If you're operating on the 80 meter, 160 meter, 40 meter or even the 20 meter band, it's highly unlikely that you want the preamp switched in because all the preamp is doing is amplifying everything. And if, for example, you've got a fairly noisy band anyway, there's no point in uh, putting a preamp in. 
The bands that might benefit from a preamp would be 10 metres, maybe 12 metres, possibly 15 metres, or on occasions when you're using a, a short antenna and um, you need that extra gain. But if you're using a main antenna on your transceiver or receiver, uh, it's highly unlikely you want the preamp other than on 10 or 15 meters. I'm talking about HF now, of course, on the VHF and UHF, it may be beneficial. So make sure that preamp uh, is turned off unless you really need it. And likewise, the attenuator. Now, if you've got a, a reasonable, reasonable size antenna on 160, 80, and 40, you probably find that if you push the attenuator in, you'll reduce the noise. It's almost, it works in parallel really with the RF gain control. So if you've got a lot of noise, if you've got S7 noise, then push the attenuator in and get that noise down to S5, because there's no point in having a lot of front end gain it doesn't do any good at all. In fact, it can de degrade the performance of the receiver. Now, another control on the uh, transceiver may be noise reduction. That's becoming a popular thing now, DSP, digital, digital signal processing, noise reduction. Noise reduction does what it says on the label. It reduces noise. So if you've got a, uh, you listen to a sideband signal, for example, and there's quite a lot of noise. Maybe that um, SSB signal is a few dB of noise. If you press that noise reduction button, you'll probably find that the noise will start to drop away and you'll be able to hear the signal better. But the noise reduction is not capable of recovering signals that are below noise level. It's a noise reduction, but it can't remove noise when there is no signal there. Um, it's, it's basically what it does, it, it differentiates between the uh, wanted audio signal and the noise. But once that audio signal, or the, in other words the SSB signal, sinks below the noise, you will find that noise reduction won't recover it. Noise reduction is really a comfort control. <laughs> it makes the signal sound better. Um, well, I was say better. It makes the signal more intelligible when there's a lot of noise, but it will also degrade the quality of the signal somewhat. You'll get sort of like warbling or if somebody's talking underwater or a bit of echo. Um, each noise reduction um, program tends to have its own little artifacts. Um, but nevertheless, it is useful, but it won't recover signals which are below the noise. Now, one of the uh, inquiries we frequently get is um, I've got a lot of noise. How do I get rid of the noise in my receiver or my transceiver? Well, I've already covered the points that uh, you can um, give attention to on your, your receiver, and they will certainly will, will improve the noise um, factor or reduce the noise factor. <laughs> um, but there's only two other ways that you can really um, improve matters if you've got noisy reception. One is to change or move your antenna and the other is to use some sort of phasing control whereby you, you, f you, you, you cancel out the noise but leave the signal. And if you cancel out the noise then you uncover the signal that was previously masked by the noise. There are ways of doing that um, and I will cover that in, in, a, in a future video. But Really the purpose of this video is to give you some idea of the controls of the receiver and how you can use them to benefit your, your reception. Um, I know a lot of you who have experienced hams um, will, will know this, but a lot of newcomers won't fully understand how these controls work. So I hope that's helped. I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the um, pictures of the old radios and uh, I mean, some of those old radios, if we switched them on now, would probably be very, very dismayed at the performance. Um, very wide bandwidths, not very sensitive and so forth. So things have moved on a long, a long way. We are, by the way, if you're, if you're uh, again, we're talking about HF, we are um, really at the bottom of the sunspot cycle. It's, it's got as bad as it can be. And I think um, 
there will be indications in the next couple of months that things will start to improve. So signals will be a bit stronger. And that's a good thing, you see. If signals are stronger, then they rise above the noise. So some of the noise problems that you've got at the moment are really because signals uh, are quite weak at times and the noise wins. But as we get up, up the sunspot cycle, then maybe the signals will win over the noise. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please press the subscribe button if you want to be kept in touch with us of uh, upcoming videos. Do appreciate uh, you watching this video and uh, there's some more interesting ones coming along. So until then, keep safe, enjoy your ham radio, take care, see you soon.